Hello all. So as we all know, Business Central 19 is available, which is Business Central 2021 release wave 2. In today's video, we'll go through steps about installing Business Central 19 <coughs> for a non-premise installation. So before we start that, what we'll have to do first is you can refer to this article which I have here for Dynamics 365 2021 release wave 2. This was written on October 1, 2021. And if you come down here, you'll see the on-premise product download links. It says will be available, but they are available now. So you can click on this and navigate you to this page in Partner Source from where you can download the product for your country slash region. For the demo, what I'll be doing is I will use uh, US United States of America DVD for the demo, but you can choose any of these DVDs as per your region. So once you download this, what will happen is uh, the product will be available on your download folder like this with a big name like Dynamics 365 BC 30693 US DVD in my case. And then you need to make sure that you extract it, but make sure that the path that the extracted file have is not that big. So like in my case, if you see the path is the, I have extracted the DVD on the root of D drive and renamed the folder as PC 19 US so that during installation, I don't have any problems. And why we do that? Because in some cases during installation, if the files from this folder get installed in your C program files. Now, if this path is big, then it'll take some time and it can also error out if it goes out of the size that is supported by Windows. So it's always preferred to make a new folder with a very simple name and try to keep it on the root during installation. So once you have extracted it and also renamed the folder to a smaller name, then the next action is go to setup, right click on it and say run as administrator. Choose yes. Now for the demo purpose, I will be installing all the three components in one single box. But in the real world, you will be installing these components into different boxes. And we'll, walk, we'll show you what that means. So once you click next, you need to accept the uh, terms and conditions. And then there are these three options out of which you will choose advanced installation option. So once you click on that, then there are two options to install demo and then choose the installation option. You can choose demo if you are doing it on your machine as a developer or as a consultant. But I'll choose the installation option just to give you different perspective of where which component need to be installed. Now there are different configuration. One is for developer, one is for server and one is for client. Now client installation option installs the web server component like where the website is hosted and uh, the server administration tool is ho hosted is part of your server part where your administration cell and administration tools are get hosted. You don't have to pick one. You can choose any of those and customize that. So instead of clicking directly on the top caption, you can click on the customize and that will give you all the options which are available. Now, as I said, in the real world, your uh, SQL server component will sit on one machine which is where your SQL server is installed, you will install your database in that server. In the next server, you will have the service tier, which is the server component, which will install the MMC for starting and configuring service tiers for the server. And also the server administration tool. These both will go there. And then if you want, and this is just an optional, to keep your web server con component, which is the IISS component on a separate server, then this component get installed in that server. As I said, for the demo, I'll be installing all of these in one single machine. 
but you can choose whichever you want on those machines and you can uh, deselect those which are not applicable for this machine so assuming that if I'm installing SQL Server uh, component I'll just do this and install the database for me on the server okay if you have to you know uh, do a service tier server then you will do these two options enable that will make your server available if that's the same server where you are going to host your ISS website then you also choose this so based on your configuration or your client configuration you can decide which component comes into which machine and that this one AL development environment just install the language extension which is required for the VS code not major it, it's part of the VS code you can install that extension from VS code also okay so let's move next and see what's available there now here it's asking the configuration that you want to use now this part is talking about the server the first part is talking about where you want to place the files the default directories are already selected then where is your server what is the server name what account you want to use if you want to have a named account which is preferred for a test slash production environment then key in that username and the password coming down here then it's about the port number it depends on uh, how many services you are by default it takes 70 series I already have a service running on 70 series so I'll make sure that it doesn't override it or sorry overlap with it so I'll change these sevens to yes and I'm adding these rules to firewall so that the firewall doesn't block connections I'll keep the SOAP off if you want if you're go sure that you would be using SOAP and OData you can do it now or you can do it later if required developer endpoint 9083 snapshot debugger I'll activate it this is the debugger that is available for SAS and I also want to add the client tool to firewall then comes after you have set up the service tier parameter which is the service par server parameter what are the different port numbers which service account to be used what is the default service will be called uh, are these port allowed from fire firewall and they are enabled or not if you come down it will talk about authentication are you using windows or you are using username password or access control you can choose that here uh, this is your SQL Server database name. If you are if you have installed uh, the SQL database on a different machine, you will have to key in the SQL Server and the instance name if there is any, and then the database name. Then uh, this is for your ISS. What is the service uh, port number you want to use? By default, it's eight zero eight zero, so that that helps there, right? And then you just hit apply and start installing the component so the first component that it is installing is the web client dependency now the web client uh, for business central has some dependencies and those are getting installed before any installation starts which is iis prerequisites for web server component so once that is done it'll start installing other components so let's wait for a while and let's see how it goes okay now as those are over now it's trying to install the client components which is uh, the components that are required for running the clients and also now it's moved to installing the SQL server database which is the SQL database that will be mapped to the service which is demo database 19.0 now installing the MMC component and other components that are required and once that is done, it will finalize with the web server component. So let's give it some time. Okay, so it's about to finish now. Let's give it a minute or so. It should be able to complete it anytime now. So it's finalizing the web server component, which will host the site on ISS that is selected here, which is my local host ISS. And let me, while it is happening, let me open ISS for you and we'll see what's happening there so at this point if you see there is only one default website in my ISS and uh, 
I should be seeing a business central website once the installation is complete uh, this will host a new site here for business central so let's give it a minute or so so as you can see the installation is completed let's refresh the sites here let me just do the refresh and as you can see there is Dynamics 365 business central available with something called as BC 190 so let's try to manage and browse this application and see are we able to access the client using this website and while this is happening I'll also check do I have other components that are needed and I'll open them for you so the first one that we would expect at this point is a business central administration uh, panel which will help us to configure services and all so let's see what's happening here as you can see the business central 19 client is now ready for, to be used and there is VC 190 service which is already created I should be able to manage it if required from here and then if I go into help and support I should be able to see what version it is using which application and platform so the installation of these components is super simple the only thing that we need to take care of while during installation is we choose the right component to be installed on the right machines as I said this is just a demo you'll never in a production environment I would never prefer you to have all these components in one single box at least there should be um, at minimum you should have two different server one for your SQL server and another one where you have the service tier your ISS hosted and everything the best scenario is if you have three servers where ISS is a part of a separate box so that the load is being shared and not everything is loaded on one single box so hope you like the video and it helps you in your installation of the central 19 if you have question drop them in chat happy to answer those questions thank you and see you next time